Hi, in this video I will demonstrate how to generate an influx management envelope using Drillsoft HDX Plus. I'll start with a pre-configured file. In configuration, <clears throat> we can see that this is an offshore well uh, with a water depth of 2,000 feet. We set a casing at 3,000 feet and the open hole section is drilled to 7,462 feet. This is a vertical well and we're using 10 pound per gallon oil-based mud with 100% oil and 0% water. To begin the IME process, we'll go to the sidebar and go to the surface equipment, the well control tab, and go to influx data. Under influx data, we see the depth of entry for the kick the reservoir pressure, the reservoir height, the permeability, gas gravity, pit gain, drainage radius, and skin factor. These are the first parameters we'll need to input. So for depth of entry, I'll choose the bit depth, the TD of the well, so 7,462 feet. And then the pressure at that depth is 3,880. So I'll put in 3,000. 980. Uh, the reservoir height 100 feet, permeability 1 millidarcy, gas gravity 0.7, pit gain 10 barrels, uh, and the drainage radius 100 feet. Under influx control, I also have the safety pressure, so I can, for this case, I'll just keep it at 10, the default value. And once I've input these, the, this information, I can go to tools. IME or just hit control I. Now that we have the IME open, we can begin entering our parameters for the IME. We can start with the well bore, the uh, flow rate that we want to circulate this gas kick at. So we can say 300 gallons per minute for this case. And then we can change the LOT pressure to 13.5 pounds per gallon. And then RCD limit, for this case, I'll start with 1200 PSI. And in the meantime, we can look at the pre-influx the pre graph, the pre-influx IME graph, and we can see how the values are moving. So, when we hit show legend, we can see what each of these lines mean. Here we have the LOT pressure line, the RCD pressure line, and the shoe pressure at maximum RCD pressure line. Next, we can, we can input the minimum and maximum detection limits. So the two barrel for the minimum and 10 barrels for the maximum. And then we can move on to the circulating and connection back pressures. So circulating, we can say 120 PSI. And during connections, we'll hold back uh, 280 PSI. It's important to look at the data table here. Uh, we have the calculations for all the friction the surface equipment limitations and the casing shoe limitations. Uh, we see that the friction at the shoe is 22 PSI, friction at TD is 169 PSI. Uh, friction MPD is the difference between the connection back pressure and the circulating back pressure. And under surface equipment limit, we see the sh limit, shut-in limit. If we exceed this, we're essentially going to damage our equipment at the surface. And under the casing shoe limits, we see the dynamic limit, the kick intensity, the maximum surface back pressure applied, and the friction between the TD and the shoe. So when we choose our circulating and connection back pressure, it is important to consider the maximum surface back pressure applied and the difference here. So we can increase these values, uh, but we can't exceed 377 PSI. 
So once we have our values input, we can see that the x, x axis on the IME displays the surface pressure and the y axis displays the volume. So we have these two horizontal lines. The first one is our minimum influx detection limit and the, the second one is the maximum influx detection limit. So for this case, it's two barrels and 10 barrels. Then the vertical lines, this first one is our circulating uh, back pressure. Anything below this, we're not uh, we're not incorporating for this for this IME. And then the second vertical line is the connection back pressure. And we see that we have a green zone, a uh, yellow zone, an orange zone, and a red zone. Here in the bottom, we see what the legend is. The green zone is the influx detection zone. This is below our minimum detection limit. So we don't, we, we incorporate this into the calculation, but we're not, we're not going to be considering any of the kicks that fall into this zone uh, as, as important or difficult to handle. We can continue our operation without making any changes as long as the kick falls within this zone. Then we have the yellow zone where we'll have to pick off bottom and continue circulating at whatever rate we had pre-selected and we should be able to remove the kick without any changes to the system. When we get to the when we get to the orange zone where in this case we're in the secondary barrier at bottom meaning uh, if we continue our operations as is with the orange zone we will most likely fracture the shoe. And the red zone here, if we increase this value, we'll see more of the red zone. The red zone here is, is the well control limitation. So if we go beyond this, we are we are meeting, we are exceeding the limitations for the secondary barrier at, at the surface. So we do not want to be in this in this zone. In the orange zone, we'd have to hand off operations to well control. So once we have this all set up, we can hit start and begin the simulation. Uh, what will happen is that we'll have a two barrel influx uh, injected and that will be circulated through the well and through the riser. And the data table will begin, uh, will be populated with uh, the information. Then once that's circulated out, we'll have the second influx circulated and then the third influx and we'll get the data table. It will let us know if we're exceeding the casing pressure or ECD at any point. And we'll also get a adjusted post influx surface pressure, the, the final IME. So let's go ahead and hit start and begin the simulation. As soon as we hit start, we saw the first influx being injected and that is being circulated up. Uh, we can track this in the, in the trends. Here we have the surface back pressure, standpipe pressure, ECD, equal mud weight, casing pressure, and casing ECD. So we see this first drop here, that is due to the gas entering the casing. The second drop, which is only seen in the surface back pressure is due to the gas entering the riser. Uh, keep in mind this is an oil-based mud uh, and by default we assume that with an oil-based mud all of the gas goes into solution so we don't have any free gas until we reach the bubble point pressure at which point the gas begins coming out of solution. We can see the gas and, and liquid fraction here by going into the whole cleaning graph and under influx control by hitting the show liquid gas fraction. So we see in the red we see the gas fraction, in purple we see the liquid fraction. And near the top we'll see the, a green line pop out and that is when the, ga when the gas comes out of solution as free gas that will be traveling. We can also track the gas under truck volume and influx. This is the second influx that's being circulated out. I believe this was a six barrel influx. Uh, yeah, and we have data for the first influx. 
So we see that the two barrel kick was removed out of the, out of the well as 2.01 barrels. The the shut and drill pipe pressure was 345 psi. The kick intensity was 0.889 pounds per gallon. Uh, we can see that the casing pressure was 1955, which is lower than the dynamic casing shoe pressure limit. And right now we're circulating the second kick. Uh, the kick intensity for that one is 0.722 pounds per gallon. The shed and drill pipe pressure was 280 psi. And we see the gas is near near the surface, and we'll begin seeing it come out of solution. We see here on track is free, uh, that a free gas is appearing. And we can also see this green line pop out here that will reach maximum as the, all of the gas comes out of solution. You can also go to trends. Uh, we see that as a yellow, as the free gas is yellow here and the gray is mixture and our mud is ten, the 10 pound per gallon mud is orange. So here what happened was the gas began ex coming out of solution and continuing to expand and then once it reaches the surface and begins leaving the well we can see this pressure decline. Now we have the third influx in the well. Can look at the ECD as well we see the effect of this of the of the kick in the well, it's a seven pound per gallon. It's just moving up. And that is because it's contaminated mud. We can adjust the the scale here. You can also see how this is affecting the pressure. You see this slight change here. And we see that the gas enter the, the casing. We, saw, we see a drop in the casing pressure, casing ECD, and also the surface back pressure. Then when the gas enters the riser, we see another drop, but that is only in the surface back pressure. See the 10 barrel kick has reached 28.3 barrels in volume. We can see that the second kick uh, resulted with 1,944 PSI casing pressure, which is lower than the dynamic limit. So we are okay on this one as well. So circulating out this kick, the 6.18 barrel influx at 0.722 pounds per gallon kick intensity didn't fracture the shoe. And it was okay with our surface equipment. We can see free gas coming out. That is the gas coming out of solution here. And as we get more free gas, we get less solution gas. We can see the surface back pressure increasing as the gas comes out of solution. And once the gas begins exiting, we'll see the pressure drop. And you can see that in the graph as well. So the gas is completely removed from the well. We can look at our data table. Uh, the 10 barrel influx 
uh, with 0.575 pound per gallon kick intensity led to a casing pressure of 1924 psi and that falls below our dynamic limit for the casing shoe so next we can go back to the pre influx uh, IME and then we can go to the adjusted post influx IME and we see that we have more operating room here uh, that means that we have more room to move with with the with this influx and we can see that our KIs the first for the first kick the two barrel kick it hasn't really increased much just three psi for the second kick for in a second influx the 6.18 barrel influx it went from 280 to 295 and for the 10 barrel we see that it went from 223 psi to 258 psi Using this data, we can we can plot or print out this report. For that, we can go to data table, report, and we'd get this report. This report would contain all of our information related to what our settings were for the IME. It would also put in the, the information that's located on top of the data table which is all the friction, the surface equipment, and casing shoe limitations. And then it will give us the data table for each kick. So we'll see the volume, the KI, the shut and drill pipe pressure. Uh, we can see the casing pressures, casing ECDs, and the maximum flow rates. And we can also see the maximum gas uh, flow rate as well. And in the bottom we see the, the IME graph. We can always adjust these, uh, the the area, the scale. Uh, we can do that by going into adjusted post influx surface pressure, and just uh, editing. So if we want to get rid of this white area. We would type in 120. And if we want to zoom in, we can always go to 1000. And that way we're only viewing what viewing whatever falls into the yellow green and orange zone and you can always save this report as a PDF file so I'll call this IME final post save it and I'd be able to open this as a PDF file. Uh, thank you for watching my video. I hope this video has helped you. And if it did, please hit the like button. Share this video with your friends and your network. Or better yet, subscribe to our channel. And I'll see you in my next video. Thank you.